NASA has just released new images of 3i Atlas that may have exposed the strangest anomaly we've documented so far. These images reveal a jet pointing in a direction that shouldn't be physically possible for a natural comet. And we're not just talking about the sun-directed jet we were observing previously. In this video, I'll explain what these new images actually reveal and why Dr. Avi Loeb is saying this could be the evidence we were waiting for. On October 2nd, 2025, three iAtlas passed by Mars at approximately 29 million kilometers distance. While this seems distant, in space terms, this is a relatively close passage. Orbiting Mars is a NASA spacecraft called Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, equipped with a camera called HiRISE, essentially the most powerful reconnaissance camera we've ever sent to another planet. When 3i Atlas passed by Mars, NASA directed this high-powered camera away from Mars and pointed it directly at our mysterious visitor. We waited over a month for these images to be processed and released. These images show us something we couldn't observe from Earth. From Earth, we're observing the object from a specific angle, but the camera orbiting Mars was observing from a completely different angle. This gave us a side view of the object that we couldn't get from here and this perspective revealed something extraordinary. This side view revealed that the anomalous jet we were observing previously wasn't doing what we thought. For months, we analyzed images showing what appeared to be a jet pointing toward the sun. When Hubble obtained images in July, the object was still approaching the sun at great distance. At that point in its trajectory, the direction toward the sun and the direction of movement were almost identical. When we observed the jet pointing forward, we considered the possibility of some unusual solar heating effect. However, at the time of these new images, the direction toward the sun and the travel direction were no longer the same. The high-rise camera captured 3 i Atlas from a totally different viewing angle, and now we can finally see what was really happening. The jet isn't pointing toward the sun or away from it. It's pointing perpendicular to the sun at a 90-degree angle, while the sun-directed jet also remains visible, extending ahead of the object in the direction it's traveling. To understand why this is so anomalous, we need to understand the three forces that control comet tails and jets. Solar heating, solar radiation pressure, and solar wind. Note that they all have something in common. They all originate from the sun. Solar heating occurs when sunlight hits a comet and heats pockets of ice on the surface. The ice sublimates directly to gas without melting, creating jets that point back toward the light source. Therefore, if a cometary jet points toward the sun, it's definitely caused by solar heating. Solar radiation pressure is different. Light from the sun pushes small dust particles released from the comet due to solar heating. Dust tails always point directly away from the sun, regardless of the comet's direction of movement. Solar wind is a stream of charged particles emanating from the sun. It pushes gas away from the sun, just as radiation pressure pushes dust. Therefore, gas tails also always point away from the sun. Each of these forces is related to the sun. The sun is the dominant source of energy and momentum acting on comets. So what happens when we observe a jet pointing perpendicular to the sun? This means it's not being pushed by solar radiation pressure, it's not being blown by solar wind, and it can't be caused by solar heating. There's no known natural mechanism to create this phenomenon. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. The jet is pointing at a right angle to the sun's direction. This isn't a small effect. The jet extends for thousands of kilometers, constituting a main structure maintained across enormous distance in space. For it to remain collimated and pointed perpendicular to the sun while the comet moves simply isn't something natural processes can achieve. Comets rotate while traveling through space. We could consider whether the comet is rotating and a jet that initially pointed toward the sun was deflected sideways as the comet rotated. This happens, and we observe it in some comets. However, when rotation creates lateral jets, they form spiral patterns. The jet sweeps through space like water from a rotating sprinkler, resulting in a curved tail or spiral structure. Atlas rotates with a period of approximately 16 hours, confirmed by light curve analysis. If a sun-heated jet were being deflected sideways by rotation, we would observe curvature and spiraling. We wouldn't see a straight collimated jet fixed at 90 degrees from the sun extending so far. 
We've studied thousands of comets and observed every imaginable type of anomalous tail configuration. Curved tails, split tails, disconnection events where the tail fragments, anti-tails that appear to point toward the sun due to viewing geometry. However, we've never observed a jet confirmed as perpendicular to the sun. Every time we thought we observed something similar, it turned out to be a viewing angle effect. When we observed from a different position or waited for a change in geometry, the jet revealed itself to be facing the sun or following the sun. The high-rise image is special because Mars was in the perfect position to observe the true three-dimensional geometry. The camera captured three eye atlas from the side while the sun was in a totally different direction. There's no viewing angle illusion here. The jet really is perpendicular. For this to happen, the jet's source would need to be continuously active and continuously oriented perpendicular to the sun even while the comet rotates. This requires either a very specific geometric configuration that somehow remains fixed to the sun's direction, which doesn't make physical sense, or, as Dr. Avi Loeb suggests, requires active control. Famous comets like Shoemaker-Levy 9 fragmented and presented complex tail structures, but all were oriented by the sun. Hale-Bopp had multiple jets from different active regions, but each was explainable by solar heating of rotational surface features. Oumuamua never showed jets, which was part of the controversy. But Atlas is demonstrating completely new behavior. Dr. Loeb considers this to be a technological object, and even those who disagree must recognize that we're observing anomalies we can't explain with conventional cometary physics. NASA should be discussing these inexplicable anomalies instead of focusing only on the basic aspects already known. This new anomaly, revealed after the long processing period of NASA's images, adds another piece to the Atlas puzzle. A jet perpendicular to the sun represents a fundamental violation of everything we know about cometary dynamics, and its existence demands explanations that go beyond established physical models. Before concluding, it's worth remembering the 12 points that remain outside any common explanation. Memorize, share, and demand clear answers. Here's the complete overview. Anomaly 1. The retrograde trajectory aligned within 5 degrees of the ecliptic plane. Natural interstellar objects can approach from any direction on the celestial sphere. The ecliptic plane, where the planets orbit, represents a tiny fraction of all possible approach angles. Random arrival should produce a uniform distribution of inclinations. Instead, 3I Atlas threaded the needle, coming in on a path that maximizes encounters with inner solar system planets while moving opposite to their orbital direction. Probability of this alignment by chance is around 2%. Anomaly 2, the persistent sunward anti-tail. Cometary tails point away from the sun, pushed by radiation pressure and solar wind. Atlas displayed a feature pointing toward the sun, visible in multiple observations spanning months. Geometric perspective effects can create apparent anti-tails, but detailed analysis ruled that out for this object. The feature is real, it points sunward, and we don't have a conventional explanation for why material would stream toward the star rather than away from it. Anomaly 3 the extreme mass. Atlas is roughly a million times more massive than Oumuamua, the first confirmed interstellar object. It's a thousand times more massive than Borisov, and it's moving faster than both. The probability of detecting an interstellar object increases with its size, yes, but the mass distribution of ejected planetesimals from other star systems should follow certain scaling laws. Finding something this massive, this fast, this early in our survey efforts represents unlikely sampling unless such objects are far more common than population models predict. Anomaly 4, the arrival timing. Atlas reached perihelion at a moment that brought it within tens of millions of kilometers of Mars and Venus. It passed through the inner solar system when Earth's viewing geometry made it unobservable from our planet during closest approach to the sun. It will reach closest approach to Earth weeks later at a distance optimal for observation. These aren't random conjunctions. The timing places the object near multiple planets sequentially, as if following a tour rather than a ballistic trajectory. Probability of this configuration occurring by chance is estimated at 0.005%. Anomaly 5. The Composition. 
Spectroscopic analysis shows nickel emission far exceeding iron content. Natural meteoritic and cometary materials show iron to nickel ratios typically around 10 to 1. Industrial nickel alloys invert this, prioritizing nickel for its corrosion resistance and strength. Atlas displays composition more similar to engineered metal than natural rock. The nickel to cyanide ratio is orders of magnitude higher than any known solar system comet. Probability of this composition occurring naturally is below 1% based on comparison with the population of measured comets. Anomaly 6, the water fraction of just 4% by mass. Comets are supposed to be dirty snowballs, primarily water ice with rock and organic compounds mixed in. Typical comets show water content around 50% or higher. Atlas is inverted, mostly rock and metal with a small amount of volatile ice. That's more consistent with an asteroid that somehow ended up on an interstellar trajectory, except asteroids don't produce the gas emissions we're observing. The low water content is documented through direct measurement of emission line strengths and doesn't match standard cometary models. Anomaly 7, the extreme negative polarization. Light reflected from Atlas shows polarization properties unprecedented for comets. The negative polarization branch, where reflected light becomes polarized opposite to the scattering plane, reaches amplitudes never before measured for any solar system comet, including Borisov. This suggests surface or coma properties fundamentally different from known cometary materials. Grain size, composition, structure, something about Atlas produces an optical signature we haven't encountered before. Probability below 1% based on comparison with the full database of cometary polarization measurements. Anomaly 8, the arrival direction traced back to interstellar space. The trajectory intersects within 9 degrees of the sky location where the WOW signal originated. That radio burst from the 70 seconds remains the strongest candidate for an extraterrestrial transmission ever detected. The coincidence of Atlas arriving from nearly the same direction decades later could be random, but the probability is around 6%. If the WOW signal was genuine communication or leakage radiation from a civilization, sending a physical probe along the back vector would be a logical follow-up. Anomaly 9, the rapid brightening near perihelion. Atlas brightened faster than any known comet. The light curve doesn't follow standard cometary models based on solar heating and sublimation rates. It also shifted color, becoming bluer than the sun when comets typically redden due to dust scattering. The blue color is particularly strange because the surface temperature should be thousands of degrees cooler than the solar photosphere, naturally producing redder emission. Achieving blue color requires either unusual composition or an internal heat source, maintaining temperatures higher than solar heating alone would produce. Anomaly 10, the jet surface area problem. Calculations based on the observed mass flux in the jets and the required solar energy absorption show that the nucleus would need impossibly large surface area to generate the emissions through thermal processes. The jets are too active for the size of the object. Either the sublimation efficiency is far higher than any known material, or energy is coming from somewhere other than sunlight. This was quantified in detailed analysis showing the discrepancy is not subtle, but factors of several times beyond what's physically plausible. Anomaly 11, the non-gravitational acceleration without breakup near perihelion. JPL detected significant thrust from non-gravitational forces. Momentum conservation requires that producing this acceleration through outgassing would vaporize at least 13% of the total mass. For a 3 3 billion ton object, that's over 4 billion tons of material ejected in roughly one month. That should create a massive, brilliant coma visible to amateur telescopes. It should fragment the nucleus from thermal stress and mass loss. Neither occurred. The object remained intact with a modest coma, implying the acceleration came from efficient propulsion rather than wasteful bulk evaporation. Anomaly 12, the rotation paradox. 16.16 hour rotation period measured photometrically. Jets extending over a million kilometers, maintaining tight collimation and fixed directions. These observations are incompatible with passive outgassing from a rotating source. The jets should spiral, should smear, should show clear rotational signatures. They don't. 
They maintain orientation as if controlled, as if emitted from directional nozzles compensating for the spin, as if the rotation serves a different purpose, like artificial gravity while propulsion operates independently. Each anomaly is serious by itself, but placed side by side, they form a puzzle that challenges conventional models. It's not enough to point out an instrumental flaw and move on. It requires open investigation and verifiable data. What do you think? Do the numbers, images, and signals convince you that we're facing something beyond natural? Or do you bet on an unprecedented explanation from cometary physics? Write in the comments. I read everything and share this video with someone who enjoys space mysteries. Comment and share. Until next time, and don't forget to look up with critical and curious eyes.